Look, we all went through a pretty traumatic time in 2020 through today. Uh, So it's understandable if you see things that upset you because they immediately put you back in February of 2020. And so you start crying and stockpiling toilet paper. Like, it's fine. That's, That's what I tell myself. Just buy the toilet paper, use it to wipe your tears. And so, you know, when monkeypox became a big news story this past summer, uh, that happened. You know, a lot of people got really scared that this was essentially COVID-22. If you're interested, I did make a video about monkeypox myths, like how, you know, did it come from banging monkeys, whether or not it's a sexually transmitted disease. Uh, you can go check that out if you missed it. So we've more or less survived monkeypox now. Um, so now it's time for round two, Ebola. And to make matters worse, this time there are even more similarities to early 2020 in that the current argument that I'm seeing play out on social media is whether or not Ebola is considered airborne. On the one hand, we have virologists, immunologists, and other experts who are saying that we have nearly 50 years of research Uh, to point to the idea that no, Ebola is not airborne. On the other hand, we have a bunch of random people on Twitter saying, but what if it is? (laughs) So let's explore each of those sides, you know, equally, since those are two obviously completely equal claims with an equal amount of evidence to support them. (laughs) Okay, I'm, I'm kidding. Um... The sides are pretty lopsided. The vast majority of respected experts on Ebola say that it is not airborne. And while it's always possible that it could mutate uh, in order to become airborne, it's extremely unlikely because Ebola has actually been quite stable over the past several decades of uh, our research on it. But I do want to give a little bit of respect to the people who are worried that it will become or already is airborne despite the World Health Organization's statement to the contrary. Why? Well, because of that COVID-19 PTSD we all have. The uh, WHO, the CDC, you know, they screwed up. They really screwed up. They screwed up so badly with COVID that they managed to screw up their response to Ebola before it even started. Our public health institutions emphatically insisted that COVID was not airborne at the start of the pandemic, instead of admitting that they just didn't have enough data to know for sure yet. COVID-19 was new and unknown. China wasn't particularly forthcoming with information at first, and the United States was run by an actual clown. So there were a lot of blanks to fill in. By going early with it's not airborne and then sticking with it long after other experts were like, no, it's, it's airborne, um, under, you know, all but the strictest of definitions. By doing that, those organizations really eroded public trust. And this is the direct result of those terrible decisions. And, you know, that it even happened earlier with monkeypox. They say it's not airborne, but they also said that about COVID. It's an overly simplistic, almost childish conclusion, but the logic is kind of sound. You know, we can't always just blindly trust what the experts say. That's true. But here's the less simplistic version. We can't always blindly trust what the experts say, so let's listen to what they're saying and then check for signs that they might be lying or mistaken. For instance, are there other experts at the same level who disagree? In this case, no, not really. This isn't just the WHO declaring something about Ebola. Dozens of people who have studied Ebola for years are publicly out there agreeing with them that it is not airborne and that it probably won't mutate to become airborne and that it is in fact containable. Next, is there some reason why the majority of experts would lie or be mistaken about this? Again, no, this isn't a brand new disease in an authoritarian country with little transparency. Ebola has been studied for over 40 years, and the people who handled the last outbreak around 2014 are still here, and they're still working, and they can inform us on how to handle this one. 
So just to reiterate, no, we should trust the experts who are saying that Ebola is not airborne. Okay, so now let's get into the nitty gritty. Ebola is an absolutely horrific disease that kills about half of the people it infects. There is a vaccine for some variations, but not for the version that cropped up in mid-September in Uganda. This isn't because it's impossible to make a vaccine for it. It's because it's very rare and rich countries that are generally unaffected by Ebola have not prioritized funding to make a vaccine. For more on that, check out the video I made last month on what Joe Biden means when he says the pandemic is over. Humanity has the ability to actually control these diseases. We just don't put the money or the work in. So it is with Ebola. Now, the U.S. did care quite a bit about Ebola back in 2014, uh, mostly because we were terrified that it was going to come and kill us. It was an outbreak that happened in Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone from 2013 to 2017. In September of 2014, a Liberian man uh, traveled to Texas, where he then fell ill with Ebola and died. Two nurses who tended to him contracted the virus, but they survived. That one death, the only Ebola death to happen in the United States for the duration of that epidemic, sent politicians and news organizations into an absolute meltdown, calling for travel bans and the forced isolation of anyone who happened to even see Africa on a map. They also started fear-mongering about the idea that Ebola could become airborne, like in this unfortunate New York Times op-ed by Michael T. Osterholm, who's an actual respected epidemiologist who was immediately and forcefully excoriated by researchers who had been studying Ebola at the time. All of this fear was for naught, as Tara C. Smith pointed out the following year in Slate, there was no U.S. outbreak, and everything was pretty quickly contained in West Africa with no travel bans needed, thanks in part to funding from Western nations and the hard work of local organizations and international organizations like Doctors Without Borders. So let's talk about this airborne thing. This isn't like the argument with COVID-19, where a virus isn't considered airborne if it just floats around a little bit, but then quickly drops to surfaces. You know, at what point do we call it airborne? Ebola is different. It can be made into an aerosol that you can then spray into someone's mouth if that's the sort of weird thing you like to get up to. But from there, the virus quickly moves into the bloodstream, meaning that there's not enough virus left in the lungs for the infected person to then spray back out into their environment. Aerosol Ebola can get in, but it can't get out. It's, it's like Ebola is Don Henley and your lungs are the Hotel California. For a deeper dive on transmission of Ebola, check out this excellent Twitter thread from Dr. Angela Rasmussen. But the TLDR is that the primary spread of Ebola is through contact with blood and other bodily fluids. So why do healthcare workers and scientists wear uh, PPE like masks when working around the virus? As Dr. Rasmussen points out, the virus is heavily concentrated in blood, and scientists studying that blood often need to do things like put it through a centrifuge, which can aerosolize it. And that wouldn't lead to an outbreak in that those scientists who got infected wouldn't pass the airborne virus onto others, but it would very much suck for those scientists. They don't want to catch Ebola. So... Better safe than sorry, wear the mask. And that's why when the experts insist that we understand that Ebola is not airborne, they aren't calling for these frontline workers to not take precautions, to not wear masks. They're not even arguing for you, the random person 9,000 miles from Uganda, to not wear a mask. Like, please wear a mask. For the love of humanity, wear a fucking mask. No, they bring all this up because they don't want people to panic over nothing. Again, they want you to have the facts so that we can make informed decisions about how to react to this outbreak. So like closing our borders, 
probably not at all helpful for a virus that spreads via bodily fluids. Aid to NGOs working on the ground to treat infected people? Helpful in this case. Uh, Worrying over the unlikely event that Ebola will mutate to be airborne? Not helpful for a virus that has remained stable for the last 47 years at least. Pumping money into research to fast track a vaccine? Helpful and will actually reduce the chances of the virus mutating at all. Like how it would be with COVID if we all got vaccinated. Anyway, as usual, my advice is somewhat scarily the same as it was in February of 2020. Don't panic if you're not in a place where there's an outbreak. Uh, Wear a mask for COVID and get vaccinated for COVID.